Welcome to Serving Locally with me, your host, Michelle Dinas, the podcast where we spotlight service in the Longmont and surrounding communities. All right, let's connect. Welcome to today's episode. We are here with the Coloradans for Responsible Wildlife Management, and I have Crystal Chick here, and I will just start out with, who are you and what is Coloradans for Responsible Wildlife Management, and just a quick overview. All right. Thanks, Michelle. So first, I want to say thank you so much for allowing me to come onto your podcast. Um, I love this, this idea you have and that you have been doing for three seasons now of bringing local organizations in to talk about how they're serving the community. I think, well, and also them giving your community ideas on how they can serve as well. I think a lot of us want to serve, Mm. but when somebody says, hey, can you come volunteer for us? Sometimes it feels like a full-time job and it makes us nervous because our plates are full. But I think you've done such a great job of letting people know that there are ways to serve your community that don't have to be these huge events, that the little things can really make a big impact. So I um, appreciate what you're doing, but I also thank you for allowing us to be a part of that. Thank you. So the organization that I'm here representing today is Coloradoans for Responsible Wildlife Management. And our purpose is to promote, enhance, and defend the North American model of wildlife management and responsible wildlife management. And I know that's a lot of, um, it's a big phrase, and I want to break that down a little bit as we go, but I want to explain a little bit about who I am and where I come from so that you can see and understand why I'm the one that's here representing the organization today. Perfect. So I spent 18 years working for Colorado Division of Wildlife and then Parks and Wildlife. They uh, merged, Parks and Wildlife and Division of Wildlife merged back in 2011, and I was hired on as a district wildlife manager, and the wildlife managers in Colorado are multi-purpose. So their job is to manage wildlife, but they do it from every different angle. They use education, they use law enforcement, of course they use biology, and all of those come together to manage wildlife in Colorado. And as a wildlife manager, you're also known as a Colorado wildlife officer or a game warden is also a common name. I did that for many years, and then I became the statewide hunter outreach coordinator. And in that position, I managed 125 of the most like dedicated and passionate volunteers. So I know how important our volunteers are, and especially when you find the good ones that just love what they do mm-hmm. and can share that passion. Um, I did that for several years, and in that position, I worked statewide, so I got a better view of wildlife management across the state and hunting across the state, and just the agency as a whole as well. And then I promoted back to the field and became the area wildlife manager. And in that position, I covered the six county Denver metro area. I supervised about a dozen wildlife officers, a property technician, and an administrative assistant. And as a team, we served about 2 million people in the Denver metro area. So my job was to manage wildlife. Mm -hmm. And it's something that even though I'm not doing it right now, I'm not with... um, Parks and Wildlife anymore, it is ingrained in me the importance of wildlife management and conservation. And the people that founded the organization, they have been doing this um, defending conservation and management for longer than I was with the agency. So it's only natural that um, I became a part of it and continue to try to carry that mission forward. That's fantastic. That's a lot. (laughs) <laughs> that's a lot. That's a lot of background. Um, that's a lot of, of, of expertise in your field then. Yeah, it's a lot of um, years. And then just the seeing different areas and having moved around in the agency a little bit, I think there's um, a lot to be learned from that, just coming at wildlife management from an yeah. education side versus 
a law enforcement site. Mm -hmm. They're all important and Mm -hmm. they all go together. And that's the great thing about wildlife managers in Colorado is they know how to manage wildlife and the importance of every piece of the puzzle and how those need to come together to manage our wildlife really well. Can you give us a little background about your organization? Yes, of course, I would love to. So Coloradoans for Responsible Wildlife Management has been around for several years, but our mission really is to defend the North American model of wildlife conservation. And the model has been around since the late 1800s, early 1900s. And that's really, I think the history of the organization comes from that because that's when conservationists, really band together to form this model that we still use today. And you think about that, that's over a century of Mm -hmm. success stories for wildlife management. So back in the late 1800s, early 1900s, as a result of market hunting, um, purposeful extirpation, and just general exploitation of our natural resources, a lot of game management species were at historic low levels. Mm -hmm. And it was I mean, everybody could see that, right? And it was the sportsmen of the time that realized they had this unique set of challenges to face. And they band together to try to fix this. And a lot of names that we all recognize, right? Like Theodore Roosevelt Mm -hmm. was part of this movement as well. And this is when they band together and created some, um, a a template basically for how we can make sure wildlife's going to be around forever. And... That was where the con- the North American model for wildlife conservation really began. And the, the two basic principles are really that fish and wildlife are for the non-commercial use of the public, right? There's no more market hunting of wildlife. And then the other goal is to really make sure that we manage them in a way that they're available at optimal levels mm-hmm. forever. I mean, those are the principles. And out of um, this time, it's also when state fish and wildlife agencies were created. It's when game laws were implemented. And it also gave birth to the user pay public benefit system that we still use today. So when hunters and fishermen purchase licenses, that money goes straight back in to wildlife conservation. That's the main funding source for wildlife conservation. And then also there's an excise tax on equipment of hunting equipment, fishing equipment, and shooting um, in anything related to shooting sports. So it was, again, that user, users pay and your conservationists pay, your sportsmen and sportswomen pay um, to conserve wildlife, but it really benefits everyone. So I know that was a long history of not just the organization, but it's that's a, really a, when it began. It has a long history, so it needs to have that. <laughs> yes, it definitely has a long history. And even though the title of the organization obviously wasn't back then, that is really when it was rooted and... Um, and when people started banding together to to um, support and and to really fight for conservation and for our wildlife, to keep it around, absolutely yeah. for everyone in the future. What is your focus at Coloradans for responsible wildlife management? Yeah, so I mentioned that our mission is to. Um, enhance, protect, and really defend the North American model of wildlife conservation, but also responsible wildlife management. And there are a lot of different ways that we do that. Of course, we can enhance it through education, Mm -hmm. just letting people, um, helping get the word out about what conservation is and what conservation has looked like and the success stories that the North American model has had so that people know this isn't a new thing. This is something we've been doing and it works really well. And the people doing it are professionals. They have not just the knowledge and the experience, but they have the data. So that's a big part of what we're doing is just getting the uh, information out there and educating people on what conservation is and what it looks like. As far as um, defending it, that is one of those that kind of changes with time. It depends on what the threat is and what we need to defend. And right now, one of our biggest focuses is on a proposition. It's Proposition 127, which is going to be on the ballot in November. And it is... um, it's attempt to really uproot science-based wildlife management in Colorado. And the, the proposition is really based on no scientific, uh, 
scientific information. There's not support for it from a scientific basis. It's really born based on emotion. And I understand that. I love wildlife. And when I'm when I'm out hiking or hunting or just experiencing the outdoors, there's a lot of emotion with that. And I understand that as much as anyone. But when it comes to wildlife management, it has to have a science component. We've got to have the data and the historical knowledge of what our wildlife populations have done and what affects them. Um, we can't just base it all on emotion. And that's really what Proposition 127 is, is um, – is a big threat to our the way we manage wildlife in Colorado right now. I was able to be a, a campground host um, last summer in, up the Poudre Canyon, and I got to work with some of the rangers and get to know some of the CPW. They'd come in and restock the lakes with fish and stuff. Mm -hmm. and it was really cool to, to work with them and see them. And um, knowing hunters, nobody feels more for those animals than those people that are working with them that know exactly the habitat they need, how many there are to be, you know, sustainable, what their prey is, um, what it looks like to be healthy. And so from a feelings perspective, I feel that that's, that that's off kilter because these people love and care more that they have done all this education, all the work, that's what they do is they care about these animals. So I just, I, I feel that's weird that, um, that it's uh, that it's that kind of feeling that's mixed up, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. So I was, like I said, with the agency for 18 years, and I don't know people that are more passionate about wildlife than the folks that work for Colorado Parks and Wildlife. They do what they do and work so hard, and they're never off the clock. They're working 24-7 mm -hmm. because they care about what they do. It's not just a job to them. It's who they are. Yes. And, um, and the knowledge they have is just... They have so much experience, but really the other thing is, is the data that the agency has. We have, um, we are so far ahead in Colorado with the amount of information we have, especially about lions in particular. And a lot of that data has come from hunter harvest. Mm -hmm. So every mountain lion that is harvested goes in for a, a check, right? So they look at, they get, they gather a bunch of biological information that helps with population dynamics and, they can use all of that data to see where our population is. And our mountain lion population is stable right now. We have a very healthy population of mountain lions, and it's because of the work of Parks and Wildlife. They're good at what they do, and I completely trust them to make management decisions on my behalf because I know that they're, they're doing it with sound science, with good data, and... Um, and they care about it, right? They're going to make good decisions for wildlife. And this this proposition, too, I think one of the hard things is that the the information that's coming forward from the people that are, are put the motion or put the proposition um, on the table is that there's so much misinformation. Mm -hmm. I personally, I, I don't like conflict. I don't like to get involved in politics. So the fact that I'm here anyways is just not something I would normally do. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I, I went to the library with my kids and we went to a restaurant and out front of those were people with a table with pictures of um, bloody mountain lions. And what they were saying is that if you care about animals, you need to sign this petition. And I, I was so frustrated because it does play on emotions, but also so much misinformation. Mm -hmm. And being a biologist, like the information behind this bill is so important. And a lot of people that signed the the initiative and our proponents of this bill don't even really know what it says. So the bill says that it's to end trophy hunting mm -hmm. of mountain lions and bobcats, but that's not what it is at all. They are attempting to define trophy hunting and the definition for they're using for trophy hunting is basically the definition of hunting. So it bans this proposition if it passes, we'll ban the hunting, all hunting of mountain lions, bobcats, and lynx. They added lynx in there, which you can't hunt, of course. Yeah, that's already a thing that doesn't need to be in there. Exactly. They're considered endangered in Colorado. Mm -hmm. They're threatened federally. Mm -hmm. You can't hunt them. They're already protected. And how do we know this? 
Because of sound science. Mm-hmm. Absolutely right. And their population is actually doing really well in Colorado as well. Um, and mountain lions, as far as trophy hunting, if somebody were to go and kill a mountain lion, take trophy parts and leave the rest of it, it's already illegal. It's mm-hmm. a felony in Colorado. It's mm-hmm. a class five felony. So we don't need a bill to ban trophy hunting because that is already in place. You already can't do it. The penalties for it are extreme fines, potential jail time, loss of hunting and fishing privileges, not just in Colorado, but in most other states as well. I mean, there are already laws and regulations to protect these species, to manage from a lot of those things that we don't want to see, right? We don't want to, um, we don't want to see, say, a, a female lion with kittens harvested, right? right? And there's laws that are created to protect or try to keep that from happening. So um, this bill really has come forward with just so much misinformation that I felt like I had to to jump in, even though it's not what I would l- wanted to do. <laughs> I, hear, I hear you. <laughs> I try to not be political. <laughs> Who are you trying to reach with your organization? Yeah, you know, with this, uh, especially when it comes to Proposition 127, we are really trying to reach everyone mm-hmm. because everyone can and if it passes will be impacted by the implications of the proposition um it you don't have to be a hunter to know that this is going to affect you if you just enjoy having healthy sustainable populations of wildlife um, this bill affects you if you enjoy hiking or just going out camping this bill um, can affect you. And part of my time that I was a district wildlife manager, I covered the city and county of Denver. I removed mountain lions from Denver. I removed Mm -hmm. elk from Denver. Mm -hmm. So there's not anywhere in Colorado that you aren't affected by wildlife, whether it's directly or indirectly. And this bill, if it passes, it would remove hunter harvest of mountain lions. So, I mean, obviously you remove one mortality, then you're going to have a population increase. And if we have more mountain lions, then potential for more conflict, um, not only, you know, with people that are hiking um, or coming into communities, but also a lot of um, game damage, right? Mm-hmm. Our ag producers are going to have more conflict. Um, but also, it's a, it's a chain, right? It's the chain of life where if we have more mountain lions, they're preying primarily on deer. So now our deer population decreases. So not only does the management plan for lions have to be completely redone, um, but also deer, and then everything that's that's affected within there as well. Um, so yeah, we're really, uh, it really can affect everyone in one way or another. What makes the work of Coloradans for Responsible Wildlife Management different than other similar serving organizations? Yeah, I think our organization is a little different because a lot of, I, I guess, a lot of people think we're a sportsman organization because we do defend hunting because it's part of the North American model of wildlife conservation. Um, but it's a lot more than that. I mean, you don't have to be a hunter to know the importance of conservation and to see the success stories of conservation. Like, for example, with mountain lions in 1965, there were only 200 mountain lions in Colorado. And today we have estimated between 3,800 and 4,400. Mm. And that's because of sound conservation and wildlife management. And um, the reason we're different than other organizations is because some of the sportsmen's organizations, a lot of times they'll focus on a specific species or um, a certain part of the state where we really encompass all of those. When you talk about conservation, you're talking about the interconnectedness of all wildlife, right? Mm -hmm. We're talking about the whole ecosystem and not just the wildlife, but also the habitat. Mm -hmm. So I think we are that organization that, um, can speak to all of the other organizations, but non-hunters as well. What are your greatest needs? I think our greatest need really is education. I think there's a lot of people that don't understand what the North American model of wildlife conservation is. And it makes sense if it's not something that um, is in your world of what you deal with on a daily basis it's probably not something you really thought about. But when it comes to 
a proposition that is on the ballot and you're voting for it, I think it's so important to make sure you know the background of what you're voting for. Mm -hmm. So our greatest need really is education. I mean, we want everybody to get out there and vote, but just to make sure that you really understand the implications of this bill before you before you go and vote. So talking to your neighbors, your friends, your family, and just letting them know that this is um, this bill goes beyond hunting of mountain lions and bobcats. Like I, I think I mentioned earlier, it's trying to change the definition of trophy hunting or put a definition in state statute of trophy hunting that really means hunting. And if that happens, there's no reason in the future why they're not going to try to ban trophy hunting of elk, for example. And you just hear trophy hunting of anything and it's very misleading because that's not what the definition is, right? right? And there's a lot of us that we, we hunt because we want to have that um, healthy resource for our family. So I hunt and I like being able to feed my family um, a, a meat source that is probably the most ethically raised mm -hmm. meat source, right? It had a very ethical, right? And the way it's, way it's raised and um, it's healthy as well. And I want my family to have um, that opportunity and also that responsibility of knowing where our food comes from and knowing um, how it got into our freezer. And every time I take a package of meat out of our freezer, I go back to where it came from. And my level of gratitude is so much higher. And I think that that misinformation about hunting and why people hunt um, is just information that we really need to get out there. And then also just the other ways hunters contribute, mm -hmm. like the licensing, mm -hmm. all those funds going towards management. If mountain lion hunting goes away in Colorado, that's almost a half a million dollars in revenue. I was just reading that will in the not blue be book there. that came out this week of how much loss and, and then how mm -hmm. much it would actually cost to the and I was just, I was just blown away with how, how much money there is in that. Yeah. And all of that money goes right back into managing and conserving wildlife and not just the, the game species, the species that can be hunted, but also the other, you know, 960 species of, in Colorado that our managers are managing. So it's a huge funding source, but also one of the reasons we have such a, a stable mountain lion population is because we have that tool of hunting to yes. manage them, to keep them at a healthy level. And the data that we get from our hunters is so important as well. So um, yeah, it's, it's education. That's our real need right now is just talk to everybody and, and make sure you're informed before you go to vote. Absolutely. I know hunting is a huge part of any culture um, and that that's being fought is is just mind-boggling to me because it's 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 in us it's in all of us and it just that's how we were able to be where we're at you know get to where we're at right and you know i talked to a lot of people that um so when i was the hunter outreach coordinator i had a lot of interesting conversations and i made a lot of assumptions about why people don't hunt and I asked, I learned to just ask everybody, like, why do you hunt or why don't you hunt? Mm -hmm. And I'll admit most of the time I was wrong um, because I just made assumptions. But the reasons people don't hunt, um, it varies. And I can have a lot of, and I have a lot of respect whether you hunt or not. Mm -hmm. And we can agree or disagree. I'm fine with that. I can disagree with somebody and completely respect where they're coming from. Um but I just, I want that opportunity to at least talk about it, you know, and, and have that conversation about the importance of hunting. And if we disagree at the end, that's okay. Um, but a lot of people, I, I thought it was, you know, maybe they didn't want to actually shoot that animal or harvest that animal and killing that animal. That is why they didn't want to be out there. And it wasn't the case for a lot of people. It was fear of firearms or, mm. um, you know, just other reasons they, di they didn't want to be out there. Um, I had a, a friend that was a vegetarian and just out of curiosity, we had that conversation. I'm like, well, why don't you eat meat? And she, she said she doesn't think that the way um, where she gets her meat source is humane. She doesn't want to 
support that. That's fair. And uh, so I talked about, you know, hunting. And mm-hmm. I was like, they're raised pretty humanely. I was like, you know, is that a barrier? And I'll be darned. She didn't. She started hunting mm. because she wasn't a vegetarian because she didn't want to eat meat. It was because she didn't like how those animals were raised. Um, and it, it, like I said, it was just so educational for me as well to ask people that aren't like me, that don't have my background, right. you know, why? And I would just ask that people would ask us as hunters, if you don't know about hunting or you don't understand hunting or conservation or wildlife management, um, don't make assumptions. I was very wrong. And I would just say, find somebody that does hunt and ask them, ask them why. And if you still disagree at the end, that's okay. But at least just get the knowledge. You're educated. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, I'm so, so big on education. Get yes. educated on what you, what you think you talk about. Absolutely. <laughs> um, do you have any events coming up or volunteer opportunities? You know, like I said, our biggest uh, focus right now really is this proposition. Yeah. So the big day is November 5th, right? Mm-hmm. Getting out there, everybody vote. We obviously want everybody to have a voice. And on this proposition, obviously, I know what I want everybody to do is vote no on this proposition. But um, more importantly, educate yourself. If you have questions, reach out to us and and get out, yeah, get out there and make a good educated vote. And hopefully you'll vote for conservation and wildlife. Awesome. How can people contact and find out more about your organization? Yeah, so there's uh, several ways to get a hold of us. And probably the easiest way is just go to our website at um, Colorado Wildlife Deserves Better. This is actually an organization that is raising funding for um to fight this proposition, but also you can find a lot of information about the proposition on this website as well. Coloradoans for Responsible Wildlife Management is supporting this cause, and we're kind of all coming together to um, fight this proposition and fight for conservation. And then, of course, going to our website, um, Coloradoans for Responsible Wildlife Management at savethehunt.com, or again, the um, wildlifedeservesbetter.com. Awesome. And they'll be on the QR code. Um, I think they're already there anyways. Um, wonderful. I know I learned and I, I, I am a hunt, I'm a huntress. Um, uh, at least we're trying to be. And, um, my son, um, actually my daughter right now, she just turned 11 and what she wanted for her birthday was to go get her, um, small games license so she can harvest squirrels because she really enjoyed that when we, when we went last year with my son. And, um, so I think that's a, it's a, It's a great way to get outside, do stuff as a family. Um, Hunting is important to us. So I, you know, I I feel with this. You know, a great point in that I think we we both hunt, right? Mm -hmm. So it's very important to us. And, of course, we're going to fight the good fight because it personally um, affects us or very directly affects us, rather. But um, just because you don't do it doesn't mean you have to be against it, right? right? There are... um, I keep you bringing cannot this. take away somebody else's right just because it's not something that fits into your lifestyle. Exactly, exactly. I was talking to somebody about some pickleball courts that were going up in our community, and it was going in this open space area that I didn't use, so it didn't really directly affect me. Um, but it was very controversial, like almost as much as hunting, right? <laughs> is pickleball is right up there. And it kind of, I don't know, the, the correlation between those is very odd, I know, but... It's like, you know, I'm not going to vote against that just because I don't do it, right? I mean, it doesn't negatively affect me. And when it comes to hunting, even if you don't hunt, not only does it not negatively affect you, it actually benefits you because it is taking care of your wildlife. The wildlife of Colorado belongs to the people of Colorado. Right. So that act of hunting and management is helping everyone. So yes, just because you don't do it, Please don't vote against it, right? Just because it's not your thing. And um, and I'll let everybody play pickleball in my yeah, hometown. Right. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Um, is there anything you would like to add about the conversation that maybe you're just passionate about or maybe we skipped over or? Um, you know, I think it really just goes back to, you know, the, hi- the history of the North American model for wildlife conservation is a success story, Mm -hmm. right? We went from populations that were at all time lows and you look at our wildlife in Colorado and 
the wildlife managers and division wildlife, parks and wildlife have done some incredible things. And we have stable populations of animals that can be harvested and can provide a healthy, sustainable food source for a lot of families. And it's because of the work of the agency. And they're the professionals. They know what they're doing. And we need to leave wildlife management up to the professionals. And in, instead of basing it on emotions and through voting, and if somebody feels very strongly about management plans or wildlife management in Colorado, it doesn't mean they can't have a voice, right? Every management plan and anytime they're changing anything, it goes through a wildlife commission. Absolutely. The public can go to those meetings. Yes. They can voice their opinion. I was just going to say that. Like, you can I have emails all the time of like, hey, if you want to get on with the wolf thing or whatever, learn learn about it and, and have a conversation with about how it's going. It's like that is completely open to everyone because they yes. understand how important this is to everyone and everybody does have a voice and that's fine, but in the right space, right? Absolutely. And the great thing about that is you can be involved in the actual making, right? Yes. So that's from the ground up. You can see all of the data and you can see what is happening behind the scenes and why we, they do things the way they do. And it makes a lot more sense that way. But if you disagree, you still have a place to voice your opinion if you want to be involved. And that's that's the way it needs to be done because that's still a way to change regulations. Mm -hmm. But it's not at this grand scale where it's going to take away a tool for wildlife management right. and opportunity for families and hunters um, and take away so much data that the agency re relies on mm -hmm. um, and a huge funding source for conservation. Right. I just think it's a weird venue to bring it to the ballot. Absolutely. It's just very strange mm -hmm. to me that it is that that's where it's at. Um, yeah, it, it, it's it's a different yeah. conversation than what should be at the polls for sure. Yes, I agree. All right. Well, <laughs> thank you so much, Crystal, for coming on and talking with us. Hopefully this wasn't too spicy for everyone out there. Um, I know I keep it kind of vanilla, so we're adding <laughs> some spice this, this season. Um, but, um, you know, I... I try to keep it open to, you know, anybody that replies back to my emails when I reach out, you know, hey, let's let's talk about this. But, you know, um, so I just want to preface that with, you know, just we just want you to be educated. Right. That's how you strengthen your community is to be educated and to connect with each other, learn your stories, talk about things. Don't just assume, like you said, because that's that's not a good way to connect with your neighbors and, and fix issues that you feel or are coming to light that might be in your neighborhood. Right. So thank you so Great. much, Crystal. Thank you. I appreciate the opportunity. Yeah, anytime. All right. <laughs> thank you to my guests, my listeners, and my supporters. Serving together, we can strengthen our community. Please like and subscribe. Do all those other things. You know you got to do them. Because that's the easiest way to, that you can serve right now. All right. Now go. Connect with others and be a blessing.